have been bound nor stooped to the calamity, you can talk to your calamity and say, Daddy's home. My God, Daddy is here. And when Daddy shows up, I have a different disposition. When Daddy shows up, I have a different aura. When Daddy shows up, I have a different attitude. My God. God, somebody holler, put it in the comment and say, Dad is here, Dad is here. I ain't well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to Evening Worship with Pastor Wes Taylor Jr. I'm so excited and elated that you've taken this time to tune into our program on today. And my excitement stems from the fact that the word of the Lord is about to be released. And my confidence is not in Taylor, it's not in human agency, but my confidence is in the fact that the word says that it will not go out void, but will accomplish whereto it is sent. My God, the word of God that's about to be released today, it's going to accomplish, it's going to manifest. I'm so excited and so confident about that until I want you to get excited as well. I want you, I'm inviting you to participate in the ministry of outreach and evangelism. Yes, I want you to participate by being a share warrior. Yes, a share warrior. We have prayer warriors behind the scene right now that are praying for the success of the word. We have prayer warriors that are praying for any blockages, any strongholds that they will come down so that the word of God may get through and be able to accomplish whereto it is sent. But we want you to participate as you're praying to participate by being a share warrior. Hit that share button, hit that like button. I want you to tag as many people as you can. Why? Because you don't know how far your ministry of being a share warrior is going to go. You may share it with somebody. They may share it with somebody. They may share it with somebody that really needs to hear this word on today. And you will be responsible for bringing hope to their lives. And so we want you to hit that share button, hit that like button. If you're on YouTube, we want you to subscribe to our channel so that you'll be up to date with all of our latest ministry offerings. And then also hit that bell so that you'll be notified every time new content comes up. Additionally, would you please, ma'am, would you please, sir, consider being a financial blessing to the ministry. The propagation of the word of the Lord is going forth on these different media platforms to all of the world. And we ask you that you would be a blessing to us so that we can continue the content, so that we can continue the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And listen, it is affecting lives all over the world. And so we want you to be a financial blessing. Plant a seed, consider planting a seed into the fertile soil of this kingdom. The information to give is on the screen right now. And so we want you, ma'am, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you would please be a, a financial partner with us to help, to push and to propagate the message of hope to all of the world. Hey, it's time for the word of the Lord. I'm so excited about this word. Listen, I want you to call someone, text them, email them, hit that share button, tell them to get on this program on today. We're gonna to be teaching from the subject, created for worship. That's the reason why we have been created. We've been created to the praise of his glory. We have create, been created to be a reflection of the glory of God. I want you to sit attentively and I want you to sit prayerfully because the word of God, as I forestated, is going to accomplish. We'll be right back after the word of the Lord. In Jesus name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. So let's get to the word, y'all. Let's get to the word. Of course, as I have forestated, we have been talking about that we have been in this series created for worship. And we have been exploring the four pillars of our worship. And the first pillar that we explored is the pillar of the heart. The second we, that we explored is the pillar of the mind. The, the heart is what do I love? We talked about what do I love? That's the first pillar of worship. The second is the mind. What do I believe? The third will be the hands. And that is what do I practice? And last, but certainly not least, 
It is the, the worship of our life. What do I model? And so on last week, we, we talked about what do I believe, the mind. What do I believe? And in order for us to have a right or a correct belief system, people of God, we have to have a right knowledge of the word of God. Faith then comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so for the past couple of weeks, previous weeks, we've been talking about this word of God. What do I believe? How do I obtain a right knowledge of God? I got to know him. I've got to know him in order to be able to properly express him. I've got to know him and we get to know him on a daily basis. No one, no one knows everything about God. Contrary to some popular opinion and some populists, no one knows everything about God because God is so expensive. These finite minds cannot contain all of who he is. Got to say that one more time. These finite minds that we have, these fallible minds that we have, cannot contain the length, the breadth of who God is. He is so expansive. He is so broad. He is so large. He's bigger than our little thoughts can imagine. And so no one knows everything about God. But it is our objective people of God. The reason why we have been left here on earth is to be a witness to someone else. Witness in our lifestyle. Witness even in our testimony. Witness even in being able to share the word of God. The Bible says to study, to study, study. Not just read, but study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing or another translation properly distributing the word of God in order for me to properly distribute the word of God I have to study it I have to know the word of God we have to be like the Bereans who study the scriptures who get into the scriptures and not just listen to what others are saying, but they study the scriptures for themselves. So uh, we talked about how do we obtain a right knowledge of God? Because I got to get my mind right. I got to get my, my mind right. And the right knowledge of God cannot just come from those on the outside. It cannot come through. Let me say it like this, y'all. Let me say it like this. A right knowledge of God cannot come wholly and solely through someone else's commentaries. We all know what a commentary is. A commentary is someone else's comments. The root word of commentary is comment. Guess what? Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a comment, whether it lines up with the mind of God and the intentions of God, that's a whole nother thing, all right? So in order to obtain a knowledge of God I've got to do that through several methods. And the first method that we explored is that we've got to listen to this show. We, we've been over this several times. I just want to review with it real quick and then we're going to go forward. I have to be able to accept the word of God as true. It is infallible as the word of God and not just a document that contains words about God. That's the first thing I have to do. I have to embrace the word of God as it being infallible, inspired, and inerrant. That's what your word is. You got to hold on to that. You, you, you have to know that. That has to be the basis, the foundation, the substratum of your relationship with God is believing wholly in him and solely in him. We believe all of the word of God. I'm getting excited too quick. Or none of the word of God. All right. We believe all. All of the word of God, or we believe none of the word of God. One writer, he put it like this in the song. He said, he's God of all, or he's not God at all. 
God is God and God is his word. That's what John said. You remember in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God in the name of the Lord. So, ah uh, boy, let's get into here. Let's get in here now. Let's get in here. So we have to accept that the word is inspired. The word is inerrant. The word is infallible. The second thing we have to do to obtain the proper knowledge of God that we talked about is that we, we get the proper knowledge of God. We get a proper knowledge of God through the personage of the Holy Ghost. The personage, the personage, the Holy Ghost is not an it. It is a person. When he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you. He will not speak of himself. He shall speak what he hears. The word of God or the Holy Ghost is a person. It is a personage of the Holy Ghost. And the third thing that we talked about, um, and I believe this was on last week, we talked about we must obtain the right knowledge of God, you all, through the teachers of the word of God. The teachers of the word of God. The Bible said, and he gave some. He set these in the church. He set these in the church for the perfecting of the saints, not just in our individual churches. These teachers and these preachers and these apostles and these pastors and these preachers are not just for uh, just for a local assembly. They are for the body of Christ. We are in the body of Christ. Whatever church we attend, that church is in the body of Christ. If they are a Bible believing blood washed but blood, uh, blood washed, blood called Bible believing church. You are in the body of Christ in the name of the Lord. And so he gave some uh, prophets and teachers and, 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 and some evangelists and some, and some pastors and prophets for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry and for the edification of the body of Christ, not the edification of one local assembly. And so we obtain a right knowledge of God through the teachers of the word of God, through the Holy Ghost, which is the personage of the word, and also by believing that the word of God is inspired, infallible, and inerrant. We believe all of the word or none of the word at all. So the next thing we're going to talk about is we obtain a right knowledge of God by developing an intentional regimen of development through his word. An intentional regimen, regimen that word is extremely important, an intentional regimen of the word of God, of the practice of the word of God. It has to be an intentional regimen regimen so let's go to this word y'all let's go to first corinthians the ninth chapter first corinthians the ninth chapter and we're going to believe we're going to begin at the let's see at the 24th verse first corinthians chapter number nine we're talking about an intentional regimen if i'm going to obtain a proper knowledge of god i have to do it through his word through the holy ghost and I have to do it through an intentional knowledge and pursuit of God through his word. First Corinthians, the ninth chapter and the 25th and 24th verse. And it reads as follows. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. But one receiveth the prize. So run with purpose. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. I'm bringing clarity to, to, to scripture. He said, run, and he gives us a reason. He gives us a why. That, why am I running? I'm not running just to be a part of a church. I'm not running just to be pat on my back by those that may be cheering me on. I'm not running just to be seen of anyone. When I have a purpose of obtaining something, whether somebody pats you on the back or not, it doesn't matter. It's not going to restrict or prohibit your run. I got to say this. I got to say this to all of you that are out there. Don't stop running because what people may say or not say. You have a race to run and you cannot stop right now. There are lives that are depending on you keeping going. 
so you cannot stop in the middle of the race. I know sometimes it gets discouraging. I know sometimes it gets hard. But listen, can I just share, with, share this with you? You are too important to the, to the kingdom of God and to the life of someone else's experience to stop now. If you stop, they might lose hope. So some of you might have just put down your, your bags and say, I'm not going to do it anymore. Go on, pick it back up. Go on and pick it back up because you cannot stop your running. He said, I want you to run. Only one receive the prize. So run that ye may obtain. So that word obtain, that word obtain, your, your reason, your why is because I need to or I want to. I have something in my mind that I need to get, acquire. So the word uh, 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 obtain means to gain or to attain, usually by plan or an action or an intentional effort. When I am pursuing the presence of God, when I am pursuing knowing more about God, people of God, it has to be an intentional, purposeful pursuit. There it is right there. Somebody need to put that in the comments. Put person or purposeful pursuit. Let me say it right so you can type it right. Purposeful pursuit. Why are you pursuing? I have a purpose in my pursuit. Why are you attending church? Because there is purpose. I'm not attending just because someone told me to go. I thought it was the right thing to do, and I do it on Sundays or whatever day I may go. That is not my why. That is not my reason. I'm after something. Glory to God. It's about 15 of you out there. I, I want you to put that in the comments and say, I'm after something. I'm, I'm after something. And listen, listen, here it is. Here it is, y'all. When you after something, when you're after something, it's very little things that will stop you from pursuing that which you are after. It's very few things. Now, folk will get on your nerve, but listen, when you are after something, don't let anything prohibit you and stop you and impede your progress. I'm after something. There it is. I'm after something. Yeah, I'm after something. You better believe I'm after something. You, that's why my praise is so crazy. Hey, Lord have mercy. Calm down, Taylor. Lord have mercy. It's too early to do this stuff here. Like, I'm, I'm after something. That, that's why my worship is the way that it is. That's why I have an intentional regimen of pursuit because I'm after something. And guess what? Can I just say this to you? We will not obtain all of what God has for us until he brings us into full glory through bringing us in, through rapturing us. Come on, get it right, Taylor. Through rapturing us and bringing him, bringing us home with him. We will not obtain all of what God has for us until we go home to be with the Lord. None of us are rushing to go home right now. I got you, you know, Bishop Bonner said it like this. You know, some of y'all, you, you, you sing these songs, and, and, and we do. We sing them, you know, oh, I can't wait to see your face. But he said, if you would look in your medicine cabinet, the medicine cabinet would tell a different story. But I'm not going to talk about that tonight. I'm after something. What is it that you're after? I'm after something that God has for me. I don't know all of what he has for me. I don't know all of what he has for me. But I do know that I'm looking to go to higher heights and deeper depths, deeper depths in him. So he says, here's what the writer said. He said, run with a purpose. Glory to God. Woo. I don't know why I can't get off this run with a purpose. He said, run with a purpose. What is the purpose? That I might obtain. It's got to be planned. It's got to be regimented, you all. I can't just run today. I just can't run when things are good. And, and then when things become a little challenging, then I stop my running and stop my pursuit. Guess what? When things become challenging, I want to share with every one of you, when things become challenging, that is a clear indication that you're doing the right thing. When things become challenging, that is a clear indication that you are doing the right thing in God because the enemy is not going to allow you to just waltz 
into what God has for you. He's not going to do it. He's not going to just allow you to just waltz into it. He, you, you, you can't just, you know, he, he's not going to do it. He's going to cause everything that he, he's going to throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink, to stop you from getting and pursuing the things of God. Just because it gets tough, just because it gets tight, does not mean you can give up. So I have to have an intentional purpose for pursuit. So what does that mean? Let's, let's break that. Let's unpack that. Let's unpack that a little bit. That means simply this, y'all. I have to have a regimen of relationship building practices with God. Relationship building practices with God. Relationship nurturing practices with God. What is that? We all know them. It's, it's very basic. That is, I'm reading my Bible every day. Every day. If you're not studying the Bible every day, we should at least be reading the Bible every day. Why? Because I'm after something. And what I need is in the word of God. And as I continue to pursue him, I pursue him. God, God, God help me. Here. I pursue him through his word and as I read his word then the word becomes a part of who I am so it has to be regimented I read the word of God I pray I have to have a daily quiet time yeah have to have a daily quiet time there has to be a time where I'm talking to God here it is y'all uninterrupted that means people of God, every now and then, every now and then, we're going to have to put that cell phone, phone on silent. Matter of fact, just put it on silent and put it in another room. Why? Because I'm after something and I have to pursue him with intention. I have to read my word daily. I have to have some quiet time with the Lord. Can't turn on CNN. Can't turn on ESPN. Can't turn on MSNBC. Can't turn on your laptop. When you have quiet time with God, and if you have not started with an intentional pursuit of relationship building habits, I want to meet you right there where you are. I often tell people, if you're developing a prayer life, don't try to get down there. If, you, if, you, if you're not an hour prayer, don't try to get down there and pray an hour. When you begin your regimen of prayer, and I know I'm talking to a whole lot of mature folk on here, so you, I know you pray, maybe some of you pray an hour, two hours. You pray all day long. But there are those, and I want you to, I want you to share this with people because here it is, y'all. We have to take the edge off of relationship building habits and behaviors. We got to take the edge off of it because sometimes, y'all, we make it way too difficult. Prayer is not meant to be a difficult undertaking. God did not give us the agency of prayer to make it difficult for us. He doesn't want us, he doesn't want it to be dutiful and taskful and laborious. And sometimes we can put so many restrictions and constrictions and, and so many stipulations on prayer until it may intimidate the new believer. Maybe the new believer cannot pray for an hour. And we sing the song, Sweet Hour of Prayer. But what if, what if a new believer can't pray for an hour? But it's in, intimidating because they'll get down and they want to get up in a minute and a half. They don't have an hour prayer life. And so the weight of them not being able to pray for 30 minutes or for an hour continues to bear down on them. And you know the enemy, he, you know, he, he, he exploits that, that disposition. And so the weight bears down on, and soon they'll just say, well, you know what, well, forget it. I'll just pray every now and then. I'll pray when I need to. I'll pray when I feel it. But here's what we want to do. We want to get into the mindset, people of God, of developing disciples. Developing 
dynamic disciples. And if we're going to develop dynamic disciples, we have to be able to give them the tools that they need to be able to be successful. We don't want them to be intimidated. We want them to be successful. Because if we keep it simple, then it can be duplicatable. My God. If we keep it simple, then they can repeat it over and over and over and over. If we keep it simple, then they can be a testimony to somebody else. This is how you do it. It's very simple. You do it this way. One, two, three, four. If we keep it simple. But if we complicate it, we get folks all upset. And, um, and in, in, it's, it's intimidating. We don't want to intimidate new converts. We don't want to intimidate. I don't know why I'm here right now. This must be the, the, the Lord. We, we, we don't want to intimidate new believers. We want to make sure that they have the proper tools that they need to be able to grow. I have a grandson. And I have, well, I got three grandsons. You, you see me smiling, y'all. But, but my youngest grandson is a little over a month old and so my oldest grandson he's three the middle grandson he's one the middle grandson I'm one and a half he, you know almost two years old and so the middle grandson and the older grandson they can eat chicken nuggets and they can handle them really well they can eat chicken nuggets but the one month old grandson Kyler cannot eat chicken nuggets so we have to uh, make sure that we give him food that he can digest. The same is applicable. God, thank you for this. The same is applicable to new converts and new believers. When there is a new believer, we give them, the Bible calls it the sincere milk of the word. Glory to God. We don't try to give them steak and potatoes because their digestive system has not developed to be able to handle steak and potatoes yet. And so we give them what they need to be able to grow without destroying their digestive system and their little bodies. Glory to God. How many times, glory, I'm going to mess up y'all. I need somebody to help me out there on Facebook or somewhere. How many times have we destroyed or we have intimidated new converts because we put all of our grown-up food in their plate? Glory to God. Lord have mercy. We cannot put grown-up food in Kyler's plate. He cannot eat it. His digestive tract. He has not grown to that place yet. So what my daughter and my son-in-law has to do. Hey God, I praise you for this right here. I'm about to shout. I'm about to shout right here. Glory to God. So, so what my son-in-law and my daughter have to do. They have to take Kyler. Come on y'all. Come on. I'm going somewhere with this. I feel this right here. They have to take Kyler in their arms glory to god they have they have to bring him within close proximity and they have to hold the bottle so that kyler can eat the milk or drink the milk because he cannot eat chicken nuggets and so they take them in close proximity and they hold them glory to God. These new converts, y'all, we just can't bring, help them to come into the church and give their lives to God. And then we just walk away from them. That's bad parenting. Glow. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Somebody type in the comment. That's bad parenting. That's bad. You don't just bring in a new convert and just let them to fend for themselves. We are to, are to develop dynamic disciples. We have been called to be a witness unto those that are coming in. My God. Bad parenting, y'all. Bad parenting. Lord have mercy. Ah, oh boy, I don't know how I got there, but that, that must have been the Holy Ghost. But the bottom line is, when the new converts are coming in, we have to give it to them where they are. Lord, I just read one scripture. I got three more scriptures. I, I don't know if I'm going to get to all of them tonight. But we have to, so, 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 so here, here's a plan, y'all. Here's a plan. Here's a plan. 
when we have new converts, when we have people that are just giving their lives to God, just seeking the gift of the Holy Ghost, because he that comes to Christ must first believe. He must first believe first. So they're believers. And they must give themselves or avail themselves to God through repentance. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, between the repentance and the Holy Ghost, what do we do to develop them and to assist them along through this process? God, I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. Y'all better come and go with me. Because far too often, we wait until they get the Holy Ghost before we try to respond to them. But how about the part, how about the place or the space or the disposition between them deciding to give their lives to God and them receiving the Holy Ghost? We have a responsibility ability to nurture them and to bring them along into full salvation glory to God mm. somebody put that in the comments we have a responsibility I need you to put that out there we no I need you, the all of you that can type it say I have a responsibility no longer can we just walk away from these folks that need Christ we already have them but far too often do we congregate around the people that are familiar with us, that already have what they need from God. They already have a relationship with God. How about those that don't know anything about them and that are left out on the periphery to learn on their own? And guess what? If we don't teach them, I got to say it. I got to say it, y'all. I got to I got to say it. If we don't teach them, somebody else will. If you don't teach your children, somebody else will. If you don't teach your cousin and nephew, somebody else will. If you, we don't teach those that come into our commune, into our sanctuaries, someone else will. We have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to develop a dynamic disciple. Dynamic is juxtaposed or the opposite of, of static disciples. A static disciple is a disciple that isn't going anywhere. Dynamic means moving, progressing, glory to God, going higher. Static means going nowhere. We have a responsibility to bring out the dynamite, glory to God. Woo! To help to nurture, to help to nurture the dynamite that is in the people of God. The converts that have come to God. We have a responsibility to provide an opportunity where their lives can explode. Glory to God. All right, I'm going to calm down. So the point that I wanted to make from all of that is that when, when, you're, when you are, when you are, teaching someone that just came to Christ to pray don't intimidate them no sense in telling them listen you got to get down there and you got to pray for, for a certain amount of time no you don't th there's not a certain amount of time that you have to pray there are models in the, uh, in, in the Bible that, that some pray for an hour some pray three times a day etc 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 but those are reference points God never told us that if you don't pray for a certain amount of time, Lord have mercy. Ah, Lord have mercy. We're we, we trying to develop dynamic disciples, y'all. There are people that are coming. Listen, y'all. We have to position ourselves for post pandemic I gotta say it one more time because we gotta get ourselves together we just can't be sitting back doing nothing we have to prepare ourselves for a post pandemic post pandemic the folks that are out in the world are gonna come to the church looking for answers and we have got to be positioned and postured to be able to share with them and to walk them through what is necessary so that they can have a relationship with God a disciple a disciple every time I get ready to say this I get sidetracked in something else so I'm just going to say it 
So if somebody comes, if a new convert comes, if somebody comes to the church and, and they said, listen, I want to give my life to God, that's, that's the first step, y'all. They, they have to be willing. They have to be willing to relinquish their will over their own lives and give it to God. He that, for, he that comes to Christ must first believe that he is. Then we walk through them through, walk them through the process of doing that. And so when they come, we have to let them know, listen. Don't try to pray for an hour. Don't try to pay, pray like Pastor Taylor. Don't try to pray like Lady Carol. Don't try to pray like Mother Taylor. Don't try to pray like Bishop such and such. Don't try to pray like Apostle such and such. Here is what, here, here, here's what I want you to do. When someone is inquiring, let them know, say, give them, give, give them this. Pray for five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, whatever the Lord tells you to do. Five minutes. But do it every day. Regimen. We're talking about regimen. We're not talking about praying an hour once a week. A regimen. God rewards. God, I praise you for the. God rewards faithfulness. It's the faithfulness that God is looking for. And, and I think, and I think that it, I believe that we were created in the image of God. And so this is how we are. Human nature is like this. I'd rather you talk to me for shorter periods of time every day than to talk to me for a long period of time once a month. That's if I'm interested in a relationship with you. God, I, woo, Lord, somebody need to get that. I, I believe that God is more interested in shorter intervals of speaking and communicating on a regular basis than he is longer prayers once a week or once a month or just when things happen. Relationship is built based upon the consistency of communication. Women, y'all ought to be helping me out there because y'all say it all the time. Communication is the key. That's what y'all tell us. You know, you get on our cases. We got to be able to communicate. Women love to communicate. They communicate. Lord, y'all communicate. Y'all know how to communicate. <laughs> y'all communicate better than we know how to, you know, listen to communication. But, but we're... But we're we're developing. We, we help us with that, Lord. Help us. You know, but y'all know how to communicate. And so once I believe, I believe that God is more interested in shorter prayers, but more frequent than long prayers every once in a while. Lord, I need you to make a way for me. Now you're praying long prayers because something done happened and you need God to intervene. God want listen. We don't have to ask where God is when we're always where he is. Lord Jesus. Somebody need to type that because I can't say it again. We don't have to seek out where he is when we're already where he is. If I maintain my position in Christ, then I don't have to look for him when calamity comes. Hey, glory to God. Jay, where, you, where are you, man? I need my hammer right down through here. I need to tune up. I need to go to about C sharp about now. When we are always where he is, we don't have to look for him. And guess what? There is a certain posture. Lord have mercy. There is a certain disposition. There is a certain attitude that I have when dad is around. Lord have mercy. You know how it was when you were little. Maybe some of you still like that. When dad is around, you have a certain aura about yourself. You have a certain confidence. Why? Because daddy here. You can act crazy if you want to. I might not be able to do nothing, but my dad is here. How many of you know that when calamity comes, Lord have mercy, when calamity comes, you don't have to bend, bow, nor stoop to the calamity. You can talk to your calamity and say, Daddy's home. My God, Daddy is here. And when Daddy shows up, I have a different disposition. When Daddy shows up, I have a different aura. When Daddy shows up, I have a different attitude. My God. 
God, somebody holler, put it in the comment and say, Dad is here, Dad is here. I ain't talking about the human dad. I'm talking about my spiritual father, my Abba father, my father who art in heaven, whose name is hallowed. My God, I'm talking about the King of kings and the Lord. I'm sorry, I'm getting excited, y'all. I'm talking about the Lord of Lord. I'm talking about the one who walked out on water. I'm talking about the one who took that same water that he walked on and divided it so we could walk. I'm talking about the omniscient God. Daddy's home. <laughs> Glory God. Daddy's here. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. Daddy is here. Daddy is here. All right. So let's make it easy for those that we're bringing on, y'all. Those that are coming to Christ. Not so much bringing on. Excuse the language. Those that are coming to Christ. Let's make it easy for them. No, this thing is not hard. The Bible said that the way of a transgressor is hard. But he said, my yoke is easy. Lord have mercy. He said, my burden is light. The ways of the transgression is tough. When you're trying to stay out there in the world. Or you're trying to do both. When you're trying to straddle the fence, it's tough. But when they come to Christ, make it simple. Let them know that, listen, every day ain't going to be sweet, but every day gets sweeter. <laughs> Glory to God. Lord, have mercy. Every day isn't going to be sweet to our human experience, but every day gets sweeter from our spiritual experience. Because God never changes it and he's still sweet. How many of you know, I often say that God is a good, that good God even on a bad day. Glory to God. So I don't care what's going on around. God does not change. And so let's make it easy for them, y'all. Let's make it easy for the converts. Let's make it easy. We're preparing ourselves for post-pandemic. And even through this pandemic, people are joining churches virtually now. And we have to be willing and ready to position and posture ourselves to nurture them and to hold them and to and to hold their hands. You know what? Y'all listen, ministry takes time and ministry, ministry, Lord, I got to stop y'all. Ministry cannot be selfish. Well, I don't have time to call Brother such and such, or sister such and such, I don't have time to do this because I got too many things going on. Listen, somebody took some time for you. Somebody took some time for you. Let me, let me, let me make it personal. Somebody took some time for me, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad somebody took some time with me. Maybe they didn't have the time, but they took some time. Songwriter says it like this, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. And guess what? Here's my response. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. So I have to obtain the right knowledge of God through a purposeful regimen of pursuing who he is. I have to have purposeful pursuit. I can't just do it haphazardly. When you get up tomorrow, you're getting up with purpose. That's your homework. That's your morning work. When you, get, when you go to bed tonight, you, you have a purpose. You have a pers purpose because you're after something. And what you're after, Lord, let me just say this and I'm going to be done for the night. What you are after is really not for you, God. What you are after is not just for you, but it's going to be through you, God. I, woo, Lord, have mercy. I got to say that one more time. What you are after is... It's not just for you, but it's going to be through you. Through you, somebody else is going to be saved. It might be your spouse. It might be your son. It might be your daughter. It might be your cousin, your nephew. It might be your neighbor. It might be somebody on your job that you've been praying for. It might somebody be somebody in your neighborhood that you've been witnessing to. and witness, yeah, some, that Somebody you've, you've been witnessing to. But it's going to happen through you. God wants to use us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God wants to use us as a channel of blessing. God have mercy. Woo! God wants to use us as a channel of, of blessing. 
That means we are the reservoir by through which and by which the blessings of God flow. They're not just for us to hoard. They're not just for us to keep and maintain for ourselves and just for our church. No, the blessings of the Lord. He wants to use us as a resource, as a channel so that we can go out and be a witness both here and abroad. He wants us to be a channel. God is looking for a channel where he can express his glory in the earth. God, I praise you in here i gotta stop right here my time is gone every head bowed every eye closed father in the name of jesus we we just we love you god we love you thank you god for putting up with us thank you for choosing us thank you for selecting and electing us. welcome back the word of the lord has gone out and it will not return void but it will accomplish where to it is sent. Perhaps you that are looking on right now, it's your heart that was a target of God's word on today. And you're saying to yourself, hey, listen, I've been running for a while. I know that the Lord has been tugging on my heart. I know that I have a calling on my life. I know that I want to be a reflection of God's glory in the earth. I've been created for his glory. And now is that time. Today, I want to give my life to Christ. If that is your decision, I want you to put that in the comments and say, I surrender. And someone will reach out to you and give you the next steps of discipleship. If you say, Pastor Taylor, listen, I've already given my life to God, but I want to experience the water baptism. Put that in the comments. I want to be baptized. Someone will reach out to you. If you say, listen, Pastor Taylor, I've been hearing about this Holy Ghost. I've been looking at it and seeing uh, people express themselves with the Holy Ghost. I've seen the life of those Holy Ghost filled uh, persons and I want the Holy Ghost. Put that in the comments and someone will reach out to you. That's what the word is all about. The word doesn't go out void, it does accomplish. And if the Lord is tugging on your heart today, why not today? Give your life to him today. Tomorrow's not promised. We don't use scare tactics. We, we use love tactics. For God so loved you until he gave his only begotten son. He gave all of who he is so that we can be all of who we are in him. And so we want you to make that decision for Christ on today. And when you do that, put that in the comments and someone will reach out to you. We're celebrating your conversion already. We celebrate already. The Bible said heaven rejoices more over one than 99 that need no repentance. My God, listen, we want those of you that are watching on to consider being a partner and financial partner for the ministry as we continue to propagate the message of hope to a dying world. Sow a seed into the furtherance of this gospel. This gospel has got to be heard here and abroad. Go ye out into all of the world. And this YLC network is affording us the platform to be able to go into all the world. But we want you to be a ministry support so that we can stay on the air, so that we can continue to propagate the message of hope. Listen, we trust that this word has been a blessing to you or to someone that you know. This message will continue to be up even long after uh, this one hour right here. It's going to stay up on the YLC network. Subscribe to that YLC. It is the hottest network going right now and we want you to subscribe to it because we don't want you to miss any ministry offerings so subscribe to it so that you can be uh, abreast on everything that's going on that YLC offers and the ministries offer as well and so we want you to be a blessing and we want you to be blessed listen until next week thank you once again for joining us in evening worship with Pastor Wes Taylor Jr. Until next time, till next Sunday at 4 p.m., stay blessed, and we'll see you on next Sunday. God bless you.